Welcome to the second lecture series where we talk about science. In the previous one, we talk about the basics of science. We talk about science as a body of knowledge, a collected piece of information from years of research about the natural world. But we talked about the fact that science is also the process by which we do that. It is the method through which we collect information about the natural world and empirically try to prove and explain this natural world by collecting and organizing information, which we call data, in a methodical way. And then try to look for patterns in that data using logic and critical thinking to propose explanations that can be evaluated by evidence and with our power of imagination. We propose these explanations, design experiments, and then interpret the results of the experiments. So ultimately what we're doing is observing the natural world until we can understand how it works so that we can make predictions about how it will work in the future and then perhaps control it. And the coolest thing we talked about in that too is that science is always changing that it's always open to change, that new evidence always is accepted and looked for even. Scientists are skeptics, which do not accept things at face value, but question everything and always look for that proof. We also talk about scientists and ethics and how it's important to measure how far you go and how you do the science. And that there's sometimes people confuse science with pseudoscience, and so we also talk about how to differentiate things that are really science and things that kind of just sound like science. Where it might be even intellectual things, but are not real science. But if you learn nothing else, you should have learned that science is all about asking questions. It's about being a skeptic. It's about challenging everything. And it's with that question that we start. What is science? Well, it starts with the question. The scientific method, I'm sure you've heard about this. If you've been in uh, any school you, and you by now should be if you're watching this video, you've probably heard of what a scientific method is. And you've probably seen different versions of it when they're taught differently, but the principles behind it are basically the same. You start with the question because that's what scientists do. They question everything. And then in an attempt to understand that question, you make observations. You try to research the problem. And then when you think you know the problem enough, you make some sort of inference about what's happening here and then you make a prediction you make a possible explanation for what's happening with your question so you have the question and now you have the answer which is your hypothesis but in science you must test this hypothesis to make sure if it's uh, it might not it might be wrong so you have to try to reject it you have to try to contest it so you do a testing procedure. You develop an experiment or a correlation of study or something to try to test this hypothesis. You collect more data. Now you analyze this data and then you draw conclusions from the analysis that you made. Now sometimes the conclusion will be that the results rejected the hypothesis. The hypothesis was incorrect. In which case you will start over, back to the question, back to try to see a different explanation that could possibly work. And hence the creativity and the critical thinking here necessary to, for you to be able to do the, all of this. But sometimes the results fail to reject the hypothesis. You shouldn't really ever support the hypothesis. In the screen here, there's a word saying support. I don't like to use that word because it makes it sound like we, def we found a definitive answer. Results never really support hypotheses. They just fail to reject them. But scientists always have the open mind to know that in the future, perhaps with better evidence, with better mechanisms, with better methods, better tools, we could find that the hypothesis is not the best explanation for the phenomena that we had in the question. Either way, whatever we find, whether the results were supported or not, we should communicate those results so that other people in the scientific community can analyze them, try to replicate them, and then the scientific knowledge can grow as a whole. That is the basic scientific method. Asking a question, making observations to understand that question, Proposing an answer in the form of a hypothesis, a prediction to explain the question. Testing the hypothesis to see if it's probably wrong or not. Analyzing the results of your tests, concluding whether the results support, reject or fail to reject the hypothesis, and then communicate what you found to others and start over if necessary. And that's the cool thing about science. It always tends to start over. Even with things which have already been tested, people start over to make sure that there's not a better explanation. We'll talk about each of these steps in this lecture series. I'll see you guys then.